Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Pray First, a conversation we have Monday through Friday right here on the Pastor Doug page. Thank you for joining us live. If you're joining us live, hashtag live, you're joining us recorded, and that's not at the 7 o'clock hour on this Tuesday. Hashtag recorded, hashtag shared, and put this out on your page. Uh, we reach so many more people when you guys are sharing it to your friends' pages. When it just pops out on the Pastor Doug page, it reaches those who follow us, uh, those who read, uh, get notifications and want to watch us. Uh, but uh, when you post it out, it reaches literally thousands and thousands of more people. And I've met a lot of new friends, a lot of new Pray First family because of you sharing it out. Good morning, Nita K. Good morning, Amy. Good morning, Danielle. Good morning, Becky. Good morning, Philip. Good morning, Kimmy. Uh, good morning, everybody. How are you guys doing this morning on this Tuesday? We're going to continue talking about Diabolos today. Diabolos is the Greek word for devil. We'll get into that in just a little bit. It's a continuation of the Not Today Satan series. Good morning, Bob McNeese. What's up, Braxton, if you're out there not in school yet? What's up, Lana and Courtney and Raymond Duffy, my friend? What's up, guy? Good to see you all. Hit the hearts, hit the lights, go crazy on those. I see Barbie over there hitting those hearts. Somebody help Barbie out. Barbie is tearing them up. Hearts and lights, go crazy on those. I see Nita K now. Uh, so hit those things for you first time guests, you first time viewers, those are for you. That bouquet of emoji, those hearts and those likes over there, that's to welcome you to our page. It's so good to have everybody. I'm going to start out this morning uh, by reading Genesis chapter 3 verses 1 through 5 and then we're going to jump right in. Genesis chapter 3 verse 1 through 5, now the serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. There are created things and there are made things. The serpent itself was a made thing. Lucifer <clears throat> was a created thing. Created means spoken something out of nothing. Made means something put together from other materials. The serpent had been made from the dust of the earth, the ground. And this animal was cunning. It was uh, stealthy. And Lucifer chose it to be the housing for himself as he has this conversation with Adam and Eve. He could have chosen any other animal. You need to understand that. Uh, the, 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 the snake by nature wasn't Lucifer. Lucifer took on the, uh, the aspect and took on the form of, took on the body of a snake. Uh, demons can do that. If you look at the story in the New Testament about Jesus and the demoniac uh, in, the, in the graves, in the, uh, in the graveyard, uh, the enemies, the, the, the demons asked Jesus for permission to go into the pigs and, and Jesus gave it to them and the pigs went off the cliff and, and killed themselves. Uh, the snake said to the woman, Has God indeed said you shall not eat of any tree in the garden? And the woman said to the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees in the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said you shall not eat it, nor shall you touch it, lest you die. Now that was... Uh, that was not true, only, only partial true. Then the serpent said to the woman, You will not surely die, for God knows in the day that you eat it, your eyes will be open, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. Our point in Genesis chapter 3, 1 through 5 is this, that Satan, Lucifer, Diabolos, is so crafty, so cunning, so stealthy, so deceptive, that he convinced two perfect people in a perfect environment that the person who put them in that perfect environment was bad. And that's what he wants to do to you, that God is withholding something from you, that uh, God doesn't care, that God is not good. So we're going to talk about four relationships that the enemy wants to divide you from because they are relationships that God has to redeem you. Four relationships that, that, that God has, has, has created for you, made for you, that he wants to use to redeem you, that Diabolos wants to separate you from. He wants to uh, convince you, persuade you, that these four relationships, uh, God is withholding something good from you in those, and that uh, he can offer you something that God cannot offer you. Everybody hashtag Diabolos. I want you to learn this stuff while we go. Hashtag Diabolos, D-I-A-B-O-L-O-S, D-I-A-B-O-L-O-S, Diabolos. It is the Greek word for devil. It means slanderer. It means accuser. Slanderer, 
accuser, slander, accuser. I'm really big on definitions, so I'll, I'll tell you some definitions today, but one of the words you need to look up today is slander. I want you to understand what the word slander means. Diabolos is the slanderer, he is the accuser. And there's four relationships that Diabolos wants to separate you from because God created them to be redemptive for you. And they are known as redemptive relationships. Four redemptive relationships. The word redeem or redemptive means to save someone from error or sin. To save someone from error or sin. God's created these relationships to save us from error or sin. And here's the four that the enemy wants to separate you from. The enemy, Diabolos, wants to separate God and man. He wants to separate God and man because that is a redemptive relationship. That relationship can save you from error. It can save you from sin. He wants to separate, number two, marriage. A covenant marriage between a man and a woman. He wants to separate marriages. How many of you notice that families are always under attack? Marriages. That's an easy one for him to slither into and, and separate from because you have two distinctive individuals uh, with two distinctive um, free wills. Um, it's, a, it's a powerful thing, this marriage thing, when the two don't become one flesh. Uh, I've, I've told people in the past, married people don't have marriage problems. Married people have single problems. The reason people have problems in marriage is not because they're married. The reason people have problems in their marriage is because one or both continue to act as if they're single. That's married people having single problems. The enemy wants to divide you from that marriage because he knows it is redemptive. It can save you from error. It can save you from um, lusts. It can save you from <laughs> uh, bad soul ties. It can save you from... And, and people think, you know, you, the only way to, to be separated from a, a spouse in a marriage is, is simply through sexual ways or just growing apart. Another way to be separate in marriage is that um, you will develop a soul tie with someone else. And that soul tie uh, can drive that wedge in just as deep as any other. The third relationship that Diabolos wants to separate you from is uh, from God's family, the church. Diabolos wants to separate you from the family of God, the church. He knows that the church, the family of God, is a redemptive relationship, that it can save you from error and save you from sin. And number four, Diabolos wants to separate you from authority because authority is a redemptive relationship. And if you look at uh, the world that we live in, in the United States of America, you will see that Diabolos is working very hard to separate God and man, uh, marriage, man and woman, uh, church, God's family, and forth from authority. And he doesn't care how he does it. He'll just, he'll, just, he'll just do it through one of the areas in your life. He doesn't care how he kills, steals, and destroys uh, from you. So let's take a look at the first one and let's look at God's will for your life and what the enemy's will for your life is. Here's God's will for your life according to his word, not my opinion. God's will for everyone is to have a loving, committed relationship with him, a loving, committed marriage and family. Now, everybody's not going to get married. And it's not even God's plan or will that, or necessity that you have to be married. So if you're out there single and you're thinking, man, that's one of God's redemptive wills, I better jump on that. Um, there are places throughout Scripture that indicate uh, that you single one are the wise ones uh, as long as you will keep yourself from error <laughs> and, and from sin. And don't be alone, okay? Don't be alone. God's will is for everyone to have a loving, committed relationship, a loving, committed marriage, family, uh, participation in a strong Jesus-following church, right standing with authority on every level. Satan's will for everyone is to be separate from God, without committed loving families, without a church family, and in rebellion to authority. 
welcome to the world we live in in the United States of America. God created us to need Him, and God created us to need each other. Everything God created in Genesis was good with the exception of one thing, and that one thing was that Adam was alone. It was not good that Adam was alone. And we'll talk about that a little bit later on, and it may be tomorrow, that there is a special manifestation of God's presence. There's God's omnipresence, His inner presence, and His manifest presence. God's omnipresence is everywhere all the time. God's inner presence is inside the follower of Jesus Christ. And then there's this manifest presence that shows up, and manifest means God does something that only God can do. He shows up, and He does something that only God can do. He shows up and does something that only God can do. It'd be like Elon Musk driving up to Cross Point this weekend and uh, manifesting himself. It, if Elon Musk was there, he'd be present. If Elon Musk gave every person in the auditorium a Tesla, he would be manifesting his presence, making his presence known, doing something that only he can do. There is a special manifest presence that comes when the church gets together, when the family of God, when two or three gather in His name, says He is there. Um, that manifest presence means that He does something that only He can do, and it only happens in the presence of the family. And the reason He doesn't give that same special manifest presence to individuals is because He doesn't want you to be alone. God does not want you to be alone alone. So the enemy wants to separate you from God. And here's three ways he does it. Number one, the Abelos accuses God to us. In other words, every time something bad happens to us, every time something bad happens to someone we love, every time we see something bad happen to children or people in the world who, you know, they don't deserve it, uh, Diabolos will take that opportunity to say that God is not good. And Diabolos is so good, remember, at that that deception that he deceived two perfect people in paradise, that the God who created the two perfect people and put them in a perfect place was in fact bad. So he can absolutely deceive us if we are not careful, if we are not walking in the Spirit, if we're not putting on the armor of God, if we're not lifting up the shield of faith, if we're not taking the sword of the Spirit. They had never experienced death. They had never experienced sickness or even a bad day. And the Abelos convinced them that God was withholding something good from them and that God was doing bad things to them. What makes this characteristic of Satan so dangerous, Diabolos, is that he is so stealthy that he will slither into your life. He will bite you and he will slither out and you will not even realize that he was there. Adam and Eve sinned. They took the fruit that they weren't supposed to eat. They took the deception. They, they, they stepped into God's place. They, they began to think of themselves, be self-sufficient, self-reliant. They wanted to be like God. Remember, that's what Lucifer did. He said, I'm going to be elevated to the most high places. I'm going to go to the farthest ends of the north. I'm going to be elevated to the top. I'm going to be like the Most High God. And when he got kicked out of heaven, he went and sold that same package to Adam and Eve, and he did not entice them to go and lie and steal and be perverted or murder or kill or hurt or do things like that to someone or something else or perversion or lusts or or anger, or, or motivated by you know, a spirit of theft, or anything like that, he came to them and he tempted them to be God. He said, God's holding something back from you. He knows in the day that you eat this fruit that you will be like him. In other words, you will be like the Most High God. Lucifer was selling the same product to Adam and Eve, and they bought it. The difference here is, is that Lucifer and a third of the angels were created with a spoken word. I don't think Lucifer understood that Adam and Eve had been made and that Adam and Eve had been made out of God himself. When God wants something and he makes it, he speaks to what he wants it made from. Beast of the field, he speaks to the earth. Water, the air, he speaks to the things he wants something made out of. But when he made Adam, he looked at God the Father, he looked at God the Son, he looked at God the Holy Spirit and said, let us make him in our image. And in the image of God, he made them, male and female, he made them. And when he did that, they were not, 
this outside existence, they were his children. And things that are made from something are not only made from it, they're sustained by it and they return to it. Ashes to ashes, dust to dust. Your body was made out of the girt earth. The, the cow was made out of the earth. The fish made out of the sea. It will return to it. He made us out of him so that when we die, we'd return back to God. Um, Diabolos accuses God to us. Adam and Eve sins, walks around in the garden naked, had been created, Genesis 2.25, uh, created naked yet without shame. And now they're walking around with shame, guilt and condemnation, and running from a God who is omniscient, all-knowing, a God who's omnipresent, who's everywhere, and omnipotent, who's all-powerful. And they're running and hiding, and God shows up and says, where are you? Why do you not know me like you used to? What, what happened to our relationship? Who's deviled you? Who, who's deceived you? It's not that God didn't know that answer. God obviously knew that answer. He wanted to know, did, do, do, does Adam and Eve understand who they've been talking to? Does Adam and Eve understand why they feel guilt? Does Adam and Eve understand why they feel shame? God's wanting to know, does Adam and Eve realize why they don't have a relationship with God like they used to? They used to realize that he was omnipresent, that he was everywhere, and they appreciated that. They, they used to realize that he was omnipotent and that he was all power. They used to realize that he was omnipresent, he was everywhere, and that they could not run, they could not hide, and there was no reason to. But now, Diabolos has separated them from a redemptive relationship. And thank God for God, he looks at this created angel and said, I made them. And they are fearfully and wonderfully made. I have plans to give them a future and a hope. I have plans to send my own son that they might be saved. And yet, all these things true, and all these things have happened. God did send his son into the world not to condemn the world, but to save the world. And Diabolos is still convincing people today that a God who would send himself to be crucified on a cross so that we might be forgiven, that we might be healed, that we might be saved, he's still trying to convince us and is doing a great job that that God is bad. God says, who told you that you were naked? Who told you that you're a sinner? Who told you? You see, a part of them had died, and that part was their spirit. You see, Lucifer understood that he didn't care whether he killed Adam's body. He didn't care whether he killed Adam's soul. And he didn't care whether or not he killed Adam's spirit. He simply needed one of them. God told Adam in the beginning, if you eat of that fruit, you will die. His body didn't die. He was still walking and talking and hiding himself. His soul didn't die. He still had a mind to think and feel guilt and shame, and now his soul is bruised and battered and crushed. It's that broken part in us. He now has pride that he'd never experienced before. In his mind and his will and in his emotions, his mind is thinking like he's never thought. His will is wanting something he never wanted. And his emotions are of fear, and God didn't give him that spirit of fear. That spirit came on him when Diabolos separated him from a redemptive relationship. But the enemy didn't care that Adam's body wasn't dead. He didn't care that Adam's soul wasn't dead. The enemy knew that God had not lied and that he had killed his spirit. And now every person is born, every person Every person is born with a dead spirit. Why was the shame and the guilt on the sexuality of Adam and Eve? Why did they look at themselves and find them naked? Why, when their spirit died, did they look at themselves and find themselves naked? Why didn't they have, you know, other thoughts like I'm a loser or, or you're a loser or, you know, I'm a liar or I'm a murderer or I'm a something or not? No, no, they looked at themselves and they found themselves to be shameful, disgraceful. Why was it their sexuality? Because when their spirit died, Lucifer 
had done something to them that would affect every generation after. Lucifer had convinced them that they were sexually defective. And when the enemy can convince you that you're sexually defective, it won't just kill you. It won't just influence you. It won't just separate you from a redemptive relationship. Whoever controls your sex controls the generations of your propagation. And Lucifer knew to attack them with pride, cause them to withhold worship, to turn their eyes towards themselves, because when they looked at themselves, they'd realize how broken they were. And Lucifer had convinced them to separate from God, be shameful of themselves, and God is asking you today, have you broken that pattern? Have you broken that curse? Have you, have you broken that original sin of pride and self-reliance and withholding worship from God? Have you noticed that there is an attack between God and man and that it is so often found in sexuality? Because the enemy knows he doesn't have to kill your body. He doesn't have to kill your soul. He will kill your spirit. And everyone's born with a dead spirit. So when you're born with a dead spirit and you give your life to Christ, what does the enemy attack? He can't attack your spirit anymore. He'll begin to attack your soul, your mind, your will, your emotions. He will turn your mind, your will, and emotions against your body. And there you have suicide. He doesn't care how he kills you. Satan comes not but except to kill, steal, and destroy. Father, right now in the name of Jesus, I pray that you'd open our eyes to Diabolos, that we would understand that some of the feelings that we have and some of the anger, some of the hurt, some of the struggles, some of the bitterness, some of the pain uh, is caused by an enemy that we can't see. And that it's Diabolos and that we've been deviled and we don't even know it. Lord, help us to give ourselves to you and that you save our spirit and that you will begin saving our soul and one day you will save this broken body. In Jesus' name. And all God's people said, amen. I love you guys. I'll see you back tomorrow on Pray First. Bye. Bye, guys. Love y'all. Hey, pray for someone, uh, our little Zoe. Um, that is Heather Kripe's little girl. She's having an oral surgery this morning and she's a little bit nervous and she's a little bit frightened as would I be and, and you as well probably. So let's pray for her. I think her surgery is at 8.30 Central Standard Time. Let's pray for her. Father, I just pray healing on Zoe, peace on Zoe. Take care of her this morning as she's going in for that procedure. Uh, give her peace and comfort and courage and that she comes out with uh, little as pain possible, little as soreness as possible and that she would say that wasn't nearly as bad as I expected. In Jesus' name, amen. Bye, guys.